Hey there, TVs. It's Aisha. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. So tonight we're doing another um, author spotlight for, as I said, I'm doing a week of featuring my favorite authors. And this one is Beverly Jenkins. She is an award-winning author. She's been writing since 1994, so over 24 years, and been winning awards since 1996 and being nominated since 1996. She's, she's been out here doing big things for over 23 years. Um, she's written well over 48 books, and I'm pretty sure I have them all here, <laughs> or most of them. Um, one of the reasons she's my autobi author, she writes fantastic fiction, particularly historical fiction that talks about African Americans here in the US and our story that doesn't always include slavery. So it's not just slave narratives, she talks about post-slavery, post-Civil War. She talks about how we were doing um, post-Civil War. You know, the part of history people pretend doesn't exist. Um, so she writes a lot of books about that time. She also does contemporary, and her contemporary books make me love them even more, as I mentioned in one of my videos, because she always ties it back to her historicals. Um, she talks about the different... Um, and reading her books, you come away with a history lesson um, and fall in love more with African-American history and our part in history. She talks about strong women and the men who love them. These stories are really about the women in history and what they've done in history. So she talked about, I learned about the um, Black Dispatches, which Amanita Ross was a part of, otherwise known as... Hello? Uh -huh. You know, we out here with our history books, just learning. And just in case you don't know who Armanita is, she is Harriet Tubman, the woman called Moses, who has a movie coming out that we need to go support because it looks phenomenal. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about Beverly Jenkins and her amazing books. She writes a lot about Reconstructionism, so post-Civil War, and that era in where America had the opportunity to do so much good, <laughs> but, you know, white supremacy will out. And of course, you know, with Lincoln dying um, and white supremacists coming back into power, you know, why give the Negroes their things? So she writes a lot of historical romance about the black towns that were founded because we were sick of that shit. <laughs> she talks about the black dispatches, you know, during the Civil War, the black spies during the Civil War, and who else but the CIA would have the most information about the black spies during the Civil War. I'm going to leave links down below to the, the three articles. Y'all need to go read them and just absorb the greatness that is black people because we've been doing big things since jump. Um, and it's just been phenomenal to read her books and the way she ties history into these romance stories, giving us the stories and letting you see it may be 200 years later, but shit ain't changed. Um, because like, particularly in Winds of the Storm, there's talks about the riots and the things that happened after the Civil War and things where um, people were given their freedom, you know, what we were promised. And, uh, how white tears and white men just acted out and lost their shit because, God forbid, they not get what they want. So, you know, kind of like what's going on now. But <laughs> so this is Beverly Jenkins and my love letter to her. I have read her for the last few years. I read her in, um, in an anthology and read and fell in love with her series because of that then discovered that she wrote a lot of books and went on a buying binge and just bought all of her things. So I'll talk to you about the first series I read by her, and that is the Blessing series. I own... Ooh. That is the Blessing series. And I own all of the books that you can own in physical form. So Stepping to a New Day. The first book in the series, which is Bring On the Blessings, Heart of Gold, A Wish and a Prayer, Something Old, Something New, 
chasing down a dream, a second helping, and for your love. And then I have the ninth book in the series, but I haven't read it yet, but I plan to this year because the final book comes out next March. And I've, of course, pre-ordered it. Um, so this entire series is based on a woman, a black billionaire, um, after her divorce, deciding that she needed to do something with her money and asking, you know, saying a prayer and asking God for direction and then discovering an ad for a black town on eBay and she buys the town and this is her story of her revamping the town. It is a fantastic read. Um, it is a Christian novel series. Um, faith is talked about in here. Um, but what I really love about this series, one, it ties back to her historical romances. Two, um, she mixes in African-American history, African-American stories, as, as well as um, Native stories. So there's a family in here that is part Native and part um, African-American, and their traditions are talked about in here and how they pass the traditions down in the family and how they're using that to help revitalize the town. So I really enjoyed the series. Two, four, six, so this is eight of them. The ninth one I haven't read yet. And the 10th one, final one, comes out next year. It is a fantastic series. I really love it because it's a lot of older women um, getting their love stories. It is focused on creating community and family that way instead of just um, family that you birth. It, it focuses on adoption and just how you can make a difference um, despite or in spite of your circumstances. So that is one series. Then we've got a few more, and we're going to go through them. So then there's the Levesque family series. This is Winds of the Storm. This is Archer series. I read this last month and absolutely loved it. As you can see, I tabbed it up quite a bit because there's a lot in here I need to go back to. Another Levesque family member is Captured. This is like a prequel to the series. Um, this happens during the American Revolution. This happens during the Civil War and after the Civil War. We have Jewel, which is the Grayson family series. I read this and Vivid. Um, I don't own Vivid, though, although I will be getting it. So this is Jewel. the story of a one of the first black female doctors um, graduating and going into a, a small black town um, that desperately needed a doctor. And the stupidity she met along the way, because, you know, men, ain't you change for black doctors in this world? Men still act like they're stupid. Um, <laughs> and it goes from a kind of a, a animosity relationship to a loving relationship. And I love the transition and the progress and the story and just the vividness of the story. <laughs> See what I did there. Um, and then Jewel is the cousin of the, um, first male character who was the sheriff of the town whose mama played a trick on him. I absolutely loved their meet cue. I love the story. It was fantastic. Um, and Jewel is the continuation of the Grayson series. I really, really enjoyed it. Then we have the Levesque family. Um, oh, Through the Storm is one of the first ones in the Levesque family. And this is Raymond and Sable's story. Sable is a um, biracial black girl that can, she can pass. And... Um, she had a brother that could also pass. And this is their story during living in Louisiana and New Orleans um, right after slavery. Um, and then the spinoff of it is her brother series. And this is called the um, Rain series um, because the brother, Ryan, goes to a town and pretends to be a white man. Like he passes as a white man because he could. And he's a successful man. And then the woman he meets, the black woman he meets and falls in love with and realizes he's going to have to give up the ability to pass, to be able to be with her because, you know, those laws were being passed at that time where you couldn't intermix um, because people are trash. And they're still trash to this day. It's just, it's amazing. Years, all these years later, nobody's learned anything. Then you have Breathless and Tempest, which are the children that are raised by the character here. 
I really love this series. I blew through the series really quickly. Absolutely love the family series, the dynamic. I loved that there was a thing in there that I was like, oh, they're not going to let that slide. And sure enough, the very next book, we get the reaction of, of people. Re All the salty white tears when they realized that this man was a black man the entire time. Woo! We just knew it was going to happen. Then I read this entire series, but I only own this book, and this is Destiny's Embrace. The Destiny series was fantastic as well, and I really enjoyed them. I, like, blew through these books. When I started reading, her books are so entertaining and so good. But there's two other books that I read, and I'll insert their, their pictures here and here so you can see. It's a trilogy. Absolutely love it. You've definitely got to check it out. Then... I read the um, NIA series or NIA series, Detroit series. Oh, love this series. This is a contemporary series. And this series, the characters in here talk about the fact that they're related to the characters in these books. Um, so there's The Edge of Dawn, The Edge of Midnight, Sexy Dangerous, there's two more. There's Black Lace and there's um, Deadly Sexy, which I don't own and I do want to get. So in this series, the mayor of Detroit is a black man and he's trying to revamp the city. And he starts a vigilante group, but they're not really vigilante because they kind of have the backing of the government. And this is their attempt to revamp the city. And these are the stories of the people involved in this group and their attempt to revamp the city. I do hope she goes back to it because it was a fantastic um, suspense series. And it makes you look at um, politics, even on a smaller level, a little differently. You know, between this and Scandal, you know, I just don't trust nobody in politics. And then next I read Wind, Sweet, Love. I don't know why I keep saying wind. Wild Sweet Love, and this one is also historical, and this one is the, the July family. That is the basis for this family, the this story, Blessing Series. So the story is called the Blessing Series, but the town is called, um, uh, what is it called? The town is called Henry Adams, and it's named Henry Adams after a um, pivotal African-American man during Civil War. And then in, um, so the July family and their history is talked about in here, but in Winds of the Storm, we get a little bit of information about Henry Adams and we start to see him as a character. So he is a, an actual person and he did make pivotal actions that help African-Americans particularly leading people into coming to the town that is founded based on his name. That's a real thing. And um, so it's fantastic to see him pop up here where you learn about him with the Levesque family, but also in the July book, which leads to the Blessing series. I just love how her stories all kind of interconnect. Um, so yes. So those are the ones that I've read. Physically own 19 of her books. And we're going to talk about the unread books that I have. No. 20 of her books that I've physically read. This one's um, Once Upon a Holiday with Beverly Jenkins, Adrian Byrne, and Kimberly K. Terry. Read this over the holidays last year. And I absolutely loved it. This was fantastic. Um, just good holiday romances and just... The sweet stories that you need. Just, yes. Um, then I'm going to talk to you about the two, four, six, seven books that I have by her that I have not read that I do want to read. And I figured I'd just add it into this video instead of doing a separate video because it's only seven books. First and foremost, even though I can't find a copy where my copy is, um, I really don't really not quite sure where my copy of The Second Time Sweeter, which is the ninth book in the series, is. I know I pulled it out to read this month, but I'm not sure where I put it. 
once again, moving things around on my shelves, not very helpful for organization. Then the other ones that I have that I have not read is something like Love, an anthology with Elaine Overton, Island for Two, Before Dawn, which is historical. This is a young adult historical, and this is Josephine and the Sh Soldier. I always almost say that word wrong. Night Song by, um, it's a historical romance. And her newest one, Rebel, which just came out this year, and I pre-ordered, of course. And I have one more Levesque family book to read before I want to read this one. And so, yes, by the end of the year, I'll have these seven books read. My goal for 2020 is to pick up the rest of her catalog and therefore have all of her books. She has 48 books I have unread on my shelf, seven, and I have read on my shelf, 20. Um, so, yeah, I want, and I have a few of the ebooks that I've read that I want to get in physical form. So, we have just a few, little under 20 to get um, to complete our collection. And as long as she keeps writing, I'll keep reading. But that is my love letter and my discussion of Beverly Jenkins and why I love her. Definitely gush worthy. Love her books. The characters are always strong. The female characters are always like someone you could relate to and fall in love with and feel. And just the way she brings the story alive. And of course, the chemistry between the characters, just phenomenal. Absolutely love it. Um, there's a lot that it brings up for me and, and you know, about Black sexual mores, um, Black women's sexuality, our feminism, our, you know, our womanist thoughts, and just where we've been and where we are and where we're trying to go. And of course, all the Black girl magic that's in here because Black women are out here doing big things in all of her books. These women are strong women and they're women to admire and I love it. Um, doesn't mean they don't cry. doesn't mean they don't get hurt, but she makes strong characters that are admirable and I absolutely love it. So I highly recommend if you're looking for hysterical, historical, not hysterical, <laughs> historical romance that has some, um, has history lessons attached to it and has lots of depth and meaning to it definitely check out Beverly Jenkins. She also does fantastic contemporary. Her sexy times are worth the read. I mean, just, my God, just amazing. And I highly recommend that you guys check it out. Also, if you're looking, um, as I said, the Blessing series is a Christian, um, I would say it's a Christian fiction um, because the sex happens more off screen than it does on screen. And it tends to happen with married couples, um, not so much just people dating. So if you're looking for a good, clean romance, then definitely check this out. Um, and the story is more focused on the, the family and the unit that people are creating, not necessarily the romantic relationships, even though they are big parts of the relationships. Um, there are married couples that come to the town. There are people that are engaged that come to the town. It's just a fantastic read and I highly recommend. Um, and I'll see. So that is my, you know, gush worthy video about Beverly Jenkins. You guys know, I always talk about her. She's always in my wrap up every month. Um, I absolutely love her books and I highly recommend them. If you, I will leave links down below to, to her. And of course her Twitter, she's always active on Twitter. So you can always talk to her. Um, let her know I sent you guys. Um, not that she knows who I am, but you know, we need to, to big up our authors. Um, if you want to read any of these seven books that are unread on the shelf with me, um, let me know in the comments down below and we can definitely read together. Um, if you want to gush about any of the other books that I've already read and just need someone to talk to, definitely leave it in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye. I am